let's talk about layering stencils. Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and the craft slash dining room. I am obsessed with layering stencils, partly because they take guesswork out. And if you're not a natural colorer, you can create backgrounds and florals and cool patterns that make it look like you are a lot better crafter than you might be. I love how today's card project turned out. And the thing I love the most is you can make a gorgeous background and top it with any greeting for any occasion. So stick around to see the magic of layering stencils and me making something that looks pretty good coming up next. Here's a look at the two key products I'm going to be using today, an old thank you word die called Swoopy Thank You, and then this new layered flowers stencil set. I love these types of sets because I don't love to color, but I think it's really cool when you can use stencils and pick some inks that are going to create a beautiful background. So I've pulled some inks here. I've got a little carnation, some peachy, I've got celery, I have lime licious, and I also have lemonade because I'm not quite sure. When I have a layering stencil and I'm still not, you know, completely, I don't have mastery down. I try to look at, okay, here's blooms, here's greenery, here's other greenery, and here's more blooms. So I could just assign you know, the first stencil to have these two colors and the other blooms would have these colors. And then I'm gonna, or when these, the, mm. yeah, now I'm getting confused. How about we just get started? So I'm starting out here working on my tonic mat and I've got a piece of Nina Solar White Classic Crest. This is the 110 pound just cause I'm, I'm making a base. And actually, you know what I might do here just so I have a sense of not moving before I pick up magnets. I'm gonna center this right here on the mat and just put one little piece up here because I'm pretty sure I'm going to trim this down. I usually trim every panel under the sun down and maybe what I'll do is I'll just use the mat here on the corners to help me line up my stencil every time. Tape a little more down here. You can never, you can never have too much tape. I mean that's, I don't, I can't really back that up. But this way by using this lower corner and the lines of the mat, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna make the mats work. Just wanna get off whatever I was using before. We'll start out with carnation. And I've got a little piece of the Tim Holtz Media Grip Mat, which is really nice for just holding my pad while I load up my brush. And I do wanna tap a little off, but you know what? I'm gonna grab that paper towel because I don't wanna make a huge mess while I'm doing this. But I, I don't want to bring this in full strength yet because I'm not 100% sure what I'm doing. So we're going to come in here and create pink flowers, okay, like that. And maybe at the bottom too, okay, we'll do this row. Oh boy, I needed a magnet there. <laughs> Let's see if I might have messed it up. Oh, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. All right. This will be fine. And now I'm going to grab the peachy and my orange brush, bring that in the center. So this is just, you know, this is idea number one, I think. And I'm probably gonna mix up the order in which I do these things. So meaning I might bring these colors back in for the next template. Oh, well, we are just, we are just moving and grooving. That is not good, Kath. Get in there, get on the lines. I'm pressing a little too hard, but it's easy to line back up and come back in with the color. Don't panic. All right, lift that up and lift that up. And that is the first layer. Just take my little tidy towel here because I don't have time to go wash. Anytime I have a pink on something, I like to try to wipe it off because pinks, they will stain things in ways that other tones won't. So it's just kind of nice to wipe it down for now. Now the next layer that comes in here is in fact, I'm keeping these in order too. I'm also just keeping the little etching here at the bottom, right? That way I know I'm in the right place 
And honestly, I, I could use a little tape here and there, but you know, maybe I just am gonna roll the dice and hold it. So let's grab the celery, because I want this to be the lighter of the greens that I use. So I will grab my brush, load it up, and just start blending in some of this color. I'm not using a really heavy hand with this, because I want this to be a little lighter. <laughs> little, ticking, little ticking going on there. All right. Bring that in. Mm -hmm. Gotta get that up in the up, upper too. Although again, I will, I will trim this down. I'm just not sure exactly how much. I don't know why I went so far off the edge there. I just want to make sure that I'm getting all the coverage. But again, also maybe a little darker at the bases of these. I could do that. Like that. Okay. I th oh, I missed a tiny bit here. But again, I don't think I don't think that will matter. And now lift up. And we have some simple greenery. Wipe this off. Let's move on to the next layer. And this is also more greenery. So I'm going to use the darker of the two green inks that I picked. Because I, I think that will look cool. And that is the Limelicious. And it's nice because it's part of the trio. There's another color called Perfection that goes with these. And these inks do work together beautifully to create a, a light to dark sort of look. So we are going to just, and I did not need to clean that off because, you know, we, we just used green. So, and if you're going darker, you're going to be fine. So let's bring that in. A little darker tone. And I will go a little heavier with this, but I am not going to do the centers. See how there are centers here too? That I'm trying to avoid until I can get another brush and I'll show you what I'm gonna do. In fact, I'll just keep my fingers over the centers. Okay, like that. Get a little ink on the fingers, no big deal. Oh, I think I did get a little in there. Oops, that's okay. Boy, I could use my smaller brush in here. Maybe I should, you know what? I'm gonna grab it. All right, I am gonna use a smaller brush because I'm trying to avoid the centers. And in fact, I might even use a smaller brush. But we'll see. The old finger works in a pinch as a mask. I'm gonna grab an even smaller brush these are my little waffle flower brushes, and I, I didn't realize how much use I was going to get out of them, but it, you know, the more that I'm doing stencils and things like that, see these little areas? Okay, I wanna take this, swirl, this is the zero, and I'm just gonna do a little tone on tone there, like that. Make sure that I'm sticking with the colors that I already used. Oh, I forgot that too. So here, here's another beautiful thing. I'll take another small one, and I will go like this so I can fill that one in there. Kind of nice. Kind of nice if you have a small space to get into. I hope I didn't miss other greenery, but go like that and get these little guys right in there without pulling in any of that green. Isn't that cool? And it will be a subtle look, but I, li I like it. Get the carnation back and fill in these friends as well. Actually, I may need to just double check. That one I kind of mixed in a little uh, orange, so hopefully that will look okay. But see how much darker that is? I think, I think that's it. Just gonna take a quick scan around and maybe this could get a little more right there, okay? 
So hopefully those greens look a little bit darker. Well, let's see what it looks like. And if I messed anything up, oh, that's cute. See how it's just kind of coming alive? Here's what I wonder. I don't know how much more of different color I want to bring in or how much of it. Oh gosh, those gave me green centers. <gasps> I didn't know that was gonna happen. So guess what? These are totally gonna be yellow because yellow and green make blue. So we're gonna, we're gonna pump all of this up with yellow. And this lemonade is a wonderful color. Let's see what happens when we go over it. Oh, I think it's gonna be very pretty. Okay. And of course I'm working, I didn't even real, oh gosh, Kathy, get in there. Oh. I'm grabbing things. I didn't realize when I started this that those centers would be part of this. And that's, that's what happens when you use something for the first time. So you wanna make sure that you use colors that will work together and yellow and green are analogous on a color wheel. Green follows yellow and they work together beautifully. Okay. See, and even in that overlap, you're not getting any weirdness so I like that. All right, simple. And now let's see what the finished panel looks like. Oh, I think that's, I can't get, can't get it up, nails. Even though I taped off a little area, that's okay, because we're gonna trim it down, but isn't that pretty? It's just fresh and easy, and just like that, no stamping, no nothing, I just, boom, created a beautiful panel. So I think what I will do, before I trim this panel, I'm gonna work on my greeting. And I thought about doing vellum, but I, I don't wanna do vellum because sometimes when I have a busy pattern and busy but soft, I want to use a white shadow layer, but I think I'm going to use, and this is just a scrap from a past project, some of the Simon Says Stamp matte gold. So I'm going to cut out the top layer here, right, out of this, and then I'm going to do my shadow layer and a couple more layers here and we'll glue them all together. I'm gonna to go cut that on my Gemini off camera and I'll be right back. So I've got my shiny gold die cut. I'm gonna put that one, let's see, upside down and upside down, that's top layer. And then I'm also gonna take one layer here of thank and you, and then off, off to the side here, I have my, over here, my ones that I'm going to glue them on top of. I'm going to be using some Elmer spray glue today, but just a little tip. A lot of us have masks lying around. It's a good idea if you don't have a well-ventilated area, you don't wanna breathe in these fumes. So I always wear my mask. At least I have started doing that so that I don't take in any more fumes than I need to. So shake it up. And I just always like to make sure it's running. Looks good and go. All right. Move that out of the way. I'm gonna keep my mask on until the fumes clear out. I'm gonna pick up layer one for thank you. I'll just do one of these real quick on camera. And just kind of get it into place for one layer of dimension. Kind of tricky with the little swoop de doo but that actually looks pretty darn good. And then take the shiny gold and pop that on top doesn't have to be perfect, perfect. I'm getting better all the time at this. Okay, there's that. And, oh, I got hair in there. That's just great. There's hair everywhere. I will repeat this after I get the hair out of here. I'll do the other one off camera and then we'll put them onto the base. For the base, sometimes I just want to use liquid glue so I have a little more time. And just so you know, I keep, <laughs> there's hair on there too. I keep one set of tweezers for what I just showed you, but then I take the other tweezers that I have. I just bought some of these honeybee so that I never confuse which is which, so that when I'm not using spray glue, I will use these for more simple lineup jobs. So got my connect glue here. And the reason I kind of like liquid glue for this is just to have, you know, a tiny bit more wiggle room. And this is super easy to dot on. The thing I like about spray glue is it covers all of the surface at once. So when you're using a liquid glue, just make sure that you 
get all of the ascenders or the descenders, the parts of the letter form in your die cut that stick out or poke up just because you want to make sure you're getting everything adhered as it needs to be. And then this, I'll just pop you here. Take a look at that and then just kind of wiggle it into place until I like how it looks. And then of course, if there's any seepage like that, you can wipe it away, but it will also, it will also dry clear. All right, now we're gonna come in, pop that right in where it needs to be, like that. And these shadow layers just make it so easy to line things up and press. So I will let that adhere and we'll move on. Now I need to figure out the crop and this die is going to give me a panel that's three and a half, let's see, three and a half by five or three and a half by four and three quarters. Really nice panel size but I'm going to cut it with a die because I like to know that I'm cropping exactly where I want it. I put some foam squares, just regular depth, and that's going to go right onto the card. I think that's going to be a nice crop. So I'll go ahead and cut this panel out and then we'll get a card base ready to finish out the card. I think I'm going to put this on a green note card. I don't know. I don't often do colored card bases, but I think this would be really pretty. So let's do it. This is green apple from Simon Says Stamp. It's a gorgeous green color and I will score this at five and a half inches, right? So this is four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half, so that we'll be creating a US A2 card panel. I'll give this a nice press, like that. Okay, like that. And I always tape my card bases closed, and I know there's, there's a lot of solutions to this, but honestly, this is the easiest one that I have found, and as I like to say, spare the, Chai, spare the crafter, spoil the tape. I'm all about the tape, but I do need some dimension for the panel. So I'm gonna use some of my ThermoWeb tape. I've been using this lately because as you can see here, it's not as thick as the 3M tape, plus I'm really low on 3M tape. And I figured, well, you know what? When you're, when you're low on one, you can, you can work on another. So that's what we're gonna do. I'll cover the back with this one eighth of an inch dement. Well, I don't even know. Yeah, I think it's one eighth of an inch. Good stuff. Just the right amount of dimension. And because this is such thick cardstock, I don't think I need to put more than three pieces. I think it will be supported just fine. And our fingers crossed that if this gets sent through the mail, well, you know. Oh, you know what? I better safe than sorry. There we go. This also has a wonderful price point. So. I usually don't do liquid glue when I'm mounting these panels, but I've been having issues with it lately because it's hard to see through my, uh, oh look, my the strap on my thing is showing. It's hard for me to get things lined up right now with the current camera setup that I have, so I have to come off to the side. And we want to preserve that margin space, right? So it's, what, about a half inch? A little less maybe, and we'll just pop that down. So now we have this pretty green framing margin space and we'll put this at an angle. This font is really designed to be at an angle so if you see it this way it swoops off that way but I like to have it so that this angle of the font lines up straight. Does that make sense? Because then it gives you like this perfect angle. And again, these are just regular foam squares, so there's a bit more loft on this greeting. One of the things I love about a background layered stencil build is you can get so much, so much use out of something like this. For example, let's go like that. Whatever greeting you have is going to be nice on this. Whatever colors you choose is going to sort of inform if it's happy, if it's cheery, if it's more somber. I mean, there's a lot of ways you can use a layering stencil and then any greeting that you have that will work, right? You just pop it on. And I like, I like that where we can actually cover up maybe one of the tops of the flat. Well, well, you know what? Let's just see. How does that look? Oh, I think that's very nice. I like the wiggle room. 
I like to confirm that I did in fact get that straight. Maybe a little more like that. There we are straight with the line. Oh, love it. Of course, I'm going to need to add a little shine. So I'll bring in my favorite gold foil here. I think we'll go with a larger one here. I don't want to, I don't want to block any of the really pretty blooms. You know, I would rather just have the pretty blooms kind of have their own space. I think we'll do flip you over. Oh, there's a little, that's fine. Don't get, don't be so picky, Kath. Little one here and the smallest one here. So just, well, you know what? That one is bugging me. I can't do it. There's a little ding taken out of it. And like I said, if you, you know, if you have your pick of the litter, yes, there we go. Okay. So just, you know, just a little, just a little scattering of five. All right. Little, little glue. little boop and slide. Boop. I like that. You. Boop. And you. Boop. I love it. It's very fresh. It's very happy. That stencil it just made a beautiful background. It looks like a piece of pattern paper. Plus, we have a greeting with lots of dimension, a great focal point for this design. I love how this turned out. Thanks so much for watching today. You can find all of the links to the products I used in today's video below in the YouTube description box. I'll see you back here with another card project soon. Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.